Hello there! <clears throat> Today, we're gonna talk about the mistakes that I have made during my hydroponics gardening. Uh, we're doing this so it can serve as a reference to the new, uh, new guys to the hobby. Uh, these mistakes cost me time and money. So, for you guys not to encounter the same problems, we'll, bring them, we'll, we'll be bringing them up now. And I hope it helps so you'll be guided into <coughs> better, enjoyable hydroponics hobby. So first thing that I have made, uh, one of the mistakes that I have made is choosing the way that I germinate my seeds. So number one is seed germination. Uh, uh, when I was new, I used to germinate it in tissue. Uh, don't get me wrong, tissue is one of the best ways to germinate your seeds. However, I do not like the time that it costs me. I believe it's a time waster to do this tweezering each and every seedling and transferring them to coco peat or to your foam or to whatever medium you're gonna use. If you're doing this by just 12-15 seeds, Okay, that's fine. You do your tweezer thing. But imagine doing this with 50. 50 seeds tweezering one by one. And not to mention you're potentially damaging the roots by squeezing them, shoving them into coco pit. I'd rather, uh, after this, uh, I didn't I did not like the time that it's taking so I just germinate in coco peat throw the seeds in there and wait for 15 days water them constantly make uh, make sure that the coco peat is moist and there you have it easy seedlings easy transfer to the hydroponic system and did not take time I mean did not take so much work, tweezer, tweezer, seriously, no. <laughs> okay, uh, next uh, mistake that I have committed, oh, here it is, here's the pet peeve, okay, this is the worst thing that I have done, uh, it is using these square foams to as medium for my plants. There's so much problems that it, that this thing has cost me. Uh, seriously. Uh, number one, as you can see here, algae. Uh, it, uh, instructions from some people is to germinate directly to the foam. These square foams. Uh, mind you, seeds did not germinate well in these foams. Next is when you have to water the see, see you, you have to water the bottom part of the foam then expose them to sun of course because you are germinating seeds uh, and the seed uh, seedlings need sunlight and exposed foam exposed wet foam to sunlight see that algae algae problems and you're basically if you germinate using this and you're tra you transfer this to your hydroponic solution, you're basically introducing algae to your hydroponic solution. Good luck with that. After algae takes over your <laughs> nutri uh, hydroponic solution, your, uh, your plants will, uh, it will cling to the roots of your, whatever you're growing, your lettuce, your pak choy, uh, they will hinder growth. And they're messy to clean when you after you after you after your harvest if you get decent harvest you will have trouble cleaning the algae you have to scrub them all off your off your hydroponic system another thing because of this this is just tiny squares uh, there are gaps in between the net pot uh, those gaps uh, sunlight can go through those gaps and reach your hydroponic solution introducing you to more algae problems seriously stay away from those foams 
they they don't do they don't do well if you want to use foam as medium use the ones that i that i've been you you just cut uh in a way that i've been doing uh just snugly fit your uh net pot so there won't be any gaps and the sun will not reach your hydroponic solution and you will not have algae problems uh, next mistake that I have made here here you go uh, 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 one mistake that I have made is not researching on the hydroponic solution that I buy uh, mind you I mix my own hydroponic solution now but back then when I was new I used to buy commercial made hydroponic solution and maybe because it was pan uh, the height of the pandemic back then there are no available supplies so I had just had to buy online uh, and I ended up buying a three-part hydroponic solution so without prior research I bought these and turns out Using a three-part hydroponic solution is too meticulous. Maybe people who have time would enjoy using this three-part hydroponic solution. What I am say, I'm saying that because in a three-part hydroponic solution, there is a mixture for early growth and you have to change the mixture again during the leaf growth or fruit bearing stage I am not into that mixing and changing in the middle of the growth cycle and putting a new mixture again I'd rather go for the two-part hydroponic solution which is just easy mixing you mix it and that's good for the entire growth cycle it takes half of the work away with com uh, in comparison to the three-part hydroponic solution and make sure that you are buying from a le legitimate uh, supplier ones that already have a track record of actually producing decent growth the ones that I bought because of lack of research are really bad uh, they did not produce the results that I am looking for so that's it. Uh, just make sure that you are conducting proper research on the hydroponic solution that you are going to buy. And next, and then Jeda, here is uh, no, here's the one of the common mistakes that every new guy, new per, new hobbyist to, to hydroponics will be doing, and that is not not having a TDS and pH meter sure uh, when you buy your hydroponic solution there is already manufacturers instructions on how to mix them 2 millimeters of A 2 millimeters of B to 1 liter versus 1 liter of water that might work most of the time it does however you have to take note that the water source of the manufacturer could differ from the water source in your home. A difference in TDS and PPM could uh, really affect the growth of your plant. So, during my hydroponics gardening, you I have encountered that not all plants will require the same amount of pH and nutrient level concentration or PPM also uh, uh, so uh, I was growing pak choy on this side and growing lettuce on this side and I was using the hydroponics mix, uh, mixing instructions of the manufacturer and they grow differently lettuce grow well, pak choy did not because uh, they require totally different um, uh, levels of mixing uh, p different levels of pH, different levels of nutrient concentration so I would suggest uh, even if you have you are using uh, the 
uh, commercial hydroponics nutrients with instructions from the manufacturer. Do check for pH and ppm. You could be doing it differently compared to how your manufacturer does it in their place. So, better have a way to measure. And there's a table. I'll give a link to the description to the site that I've been using as reference when mixing my hydroponic solutions. I have been relying on this ever since and it has never failed me. Go ahead and check below. Make sure to have your pH and TDS meter. These are really cheap. You go by. <laughs> now, the last two parts is probably just trial and error. You might not have to do it. And this, the uh, one of them is, oh, you have to do this. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. You have to do this and that is putting a cover or sh a cover over your hydroponic system. Because you don't want rainwater entering your uh, mixing with your hydroponic solution. It will dilute the solution. It will overflow the solution. It might even drown your plants. So, better have a cover. Uh, preferably a UV sheet. Uh, those are just cheap. You can buy it from your... A local gardening store and this will prevent rain from coming into contact with your hydroponics mixture but and will serve as a shade as well if you are places like here in the Philippines where it's very hot in the some in the dry season uh, yesterday we have reached 40 degrees so better have decent shading uh, back then I did not do that and it messed up my plants as you can see here so the, now the last step uh, the last mistake that I have committed this will be trial and error on both me and you maybe you will, you'll need it maybe you won't and that is adding support grow lights to your system uh, we, we have to take into account the amount of light exposure that the plants needs, six, uh, six to eight hours a day. In my place, uh, I only have four hours of direct sunlight and that, that caused my plants to go leggy. They concentrated their growth in getting tall and going after the sun rather than growing leaves that uh, what we want for our plants is to grow their leaves because those are, those are the parts that we eat so uh, if you put uh, support grow lights or even the ones that I use I just I just use cheap LEDs uh, they will help in maintaining your plants desire to just grow leaves rather than grow tall and you will uh, go towards the goal of uh, growing decent lettuce or decent pak choy or decent whatever leafy you're growing because we want the leaves to develop, not the stems. And if your place has decent sunlight, you're, you, you just have to cross out this tip. Uh, and I think that's all it there is to the mistakes that I made, uh, last tip could be uh, just do your research on where you're buying. Uh, sellers will basically prey on you if you're new. They would sell whatever they, whatever they have, thinking that you don't know what you're doing. And yeah, we go back to this foam here that's a waste of money don't buy it seriously <laughs> so uh and that's about it I, I hope this video will help you uh avoid the mistakes that i have made and enjoy planting and thank you <laughs>